Hey gang, what's going on? This is Warren from the Bite That Team here to talk about Dana Bryan's book. Yes, my improbable journey to the main event of WrestleMania. I finished reading it and I also listened to the audiobook version. So at the end of the video, I'll make sure to give my feedback as to which format I preferred more. Now, before going into specific details about the book, I know that some people may be concerned about the format in the way that does it only talk about NXT forward since it's a WWE produced book. This is easily one of the most enjoyable autobiographies I've read in a very long time. I have a couple here, you know, Chris Jericho, Mankind, Mick Foley, and th those are all about guys that went to the top of the food chain of wrestling. You know, larger than life characters that have gone through personal struggles, but sadly, either themselves or people around them have been involved with drug abuse, substance use, family issues, because wrestling involves that. But Dan O'Brien's story is so far apart from that, that you need to read this, even if you don't like wrestling. It's so enjoyable, it's so incredible, and it's also so motivational. Dan O'Brien is 5'8", around 200 pounds. And when you think about that, you don't think, oh, that's a sports entertainer. That is the, the, the face of the WWE. And the book talks about that step by step, all the things that made sure that he had a successful career, that this image that you see holding the two titles, concluding a WrestleMania, that didn't just happen out of nowhere. If anything, it was made even harder than CM Punk's career, which we've had a documentary about. But with Dean O'Brien, you know, he was trained by Shawn Michaels at the beginning of his career going through so many shady details to the point where his mother actually had to talk to Shawn Michaels' mother about going into the school. And then he proceeded to basically quit his job, travel across the, across the country, not knowing what the hell was going to happen. Now, that is an incredible thing that is motivational because it shows how devoted he is, despite the fact that, once again, throughout all this, he is the shortest guy, he is the least charismatic guy, he has the smallest build, and he's not a high flyer. He's not Rey Mysterio. So by any means, he should have failed in wrestling, but he did not. Now, details also talk about who he trained with, guys like uh, Brian Kendrick, of course, uh, people also know as Spanky, guys like Lance Cade that later went on to become Garrison Cade and also sadly passed away after I thought he had a ton of potential in wrestling. And then step by step, the details that led to that. You know, some people have only been exposed to Dana Bryan in NXT going forward and thought that maybe that, would, that was his first time in the WWE. That wasn't. He was involved in a lot of dark matches, wrestled John Cena when he was still the doctor of thugonomics, and in that process, he was fired on multiple occasions. And where other wrestlers would have seen that as an opportunity to quit, he actually went to Japan and became more popular. He became uh, one of Ring of Honor's top stars, despite that, once again, he maybe didn't have the most marketable look. Maybe he wasn't the best promo guy. He needed a mask at one point in his, in his career, because his facial expressions didn't meet his wrestling ability. And the book goes step by step about all these things. And the cool thing is that the beginning of each chapter sort of takes a break from that. Because, of course, the book is about this match, about this moment. So the beginning talks about sort of the week leading up to that. You know, preparing for his marriage, the wedding, uh, talking about his father sadly passing away, talking about the preparation for the match, all the backstage things. And it is awesome and because then it's like it takes you back. Oh, you know what happens at the end of the story, but now we're going to take you back, you know, to see what really happened there. Now, when ultimately he goes into WWE the way we know, you know, Mr. Money in the Bank, Nexus as a rookie in NXT, I should say, uh, the authority storyline. It is amazing how this is a, uh, an autobiography that goes behind the scenes. But when you compare that to the story that we saw on screen, it's pretty much the same thing. His story, I guess, if you wanted to compare it to something else, is like a, like a sports story in a movie. You know, the ultimate underdog that wanted to succeed and nobody expected to, but when he did, everybody was really proud of him. That's this guy right here. That's what the book is all about. Because when he got into WWE as an NXT rookie, he goes into detail about, you know, things like The Miz. People hated the fact that he was his pro, but The Miz helped guide him through a lot of the backstage politics that happened in WWE. When he became the Money in the Bank winner, nobody knew he was going to win until the night of the match. He found out then, and then they had nothing for him. And then he proceeded to make the best out of every situation, even at points where 
Maybe getting fired from WWE was a possibility. He was still optimistic about what he could do the day after. So time and time again, where injuries happen, where all these things happen, anybody would have quit. The book is the triumphant details about how he actually proceeded to succeed. Now, of course, we know that after this, sadly, Dan O'Brien had multiple injuries, all the situations that happened. And this book indirectly addresses that in the way that you see consistently he has no off switch either he is the best wrestler in the world or he doesn't wrestle and that led to a lot of shoulder injuries just a lot of concussions with guys like Nigel McGuinness concussions in the WWE where a match had to be stopped and he flipped out to everybody including Vince McMahon and Triple H so if you want to know all these details do yourself a favor get yes my improbable journey to the main event of WrestleMania uh, it's a book where when I finished reading it, I almost wanted to start reading it again, simply because, once again, it's so likable. You know, it's not about this guy that, you know, cheated on this person and then when the drug abuse route and then all these things in wrestling. It's so nice. It's so motivational that it makes you look at your life like you can do anything you want. You know, look at what the, this guy did. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I listened to the audiobook version, and the cool thing is that, say you like a podcast, either ours or you know Chris Jericho's or something like that, the audiobook is almost like a 10-hour long podcast. It's about 9 hours, 50 minutes, and Dana Bryan narrates the entire book with the exception of the beginning of each chapter, which is read in third person. So that's another guy, but that is a great option. You can check it out in Audible. Uh, you can maybe do the trial, and then you listen to it. It costs you nothing. So if you listen to the book or if you read it, I would love to know what you thought about, yes, my improbable journey to the main event of WrestleMania by leaving a comment below. And then bonus question, which is your favorite WWE and or wrestler autobiography? You know, mine a line still around the world in spandex, that's pretty still up there. That that may still be my favorite, but yes, my main event to the uh, my improbable journey to the main event of WrestleMania, which is a very long title by the way, is probably my number two. Maybe it'll change. I think it can take that number one spot. But yeah, let me know which was your favorite autobiography. Uh, hope you check it out. Awesome book. And the crazy thing is, we don't know what happens after the book because it's not about a storyline. It's like. You know, this guy's injured, so if this ended right here, this book is amazing for a movie. Think about it. This guy went through all those things, won the title, and then had to completely fade away from the company, basically, because he got injured. If, if that's not a movie, I don't know what is. So once again, check it out. Join the Yes Movement by reading it. I got a signed version, which is pretty cool. So until next time, thanks for watching this. Watch other stuff right here, podcast every Tuesday night, and we'll be back with a ton more videos right here on Bite That.